I've spent around 20 hours playing Power World now and here I am to give you a definitive heads up guide about what to expect and what I wish I knew earlier. Power World's about to release on the 19th of January, depending on where you are, it could be the 18th, but I got given a good few days early access. So here's everything I wish I knew first. My name's Jade, if you find this useful, do leave a like, make sure you're subscribed and let's go. Before you've even gone and spawned into the windswept hills, the spawn point for everyone, there's a few things you need to know. The game has an extensive customizable settings that you can make the game either easier or harder. If you've ever played games like Ark or Conan, you'll recognize that some of these sliders do basically either increase how much you need to eat or drink, how much health you regain, and how tough you find some of the pals in the world, and how much damage you do. I've got a separate guide incoming for this, so go and check it out, but pay attention to what it's telling you. Generally, the more you put it to the right, the more resources, the more items, the quicker things will be with just a few key differences with some of them which I'm going to go over. But yes, you can customise this and here's what you need to know, it doesn't affect you getting achievements. It currently has Steam achievements and I'm expecting it to add Xbox very soon, so don't worry, you can still get achievements if you change it to customised world. If you make a mistake or things are too easy or hard, you can always adjust it and change it whenever you want, just got to go back to the main menu. The only thing you can't change is how your character looks once you've started a world. So the game forces you to spawn in windswept hills, but if you die, you'll actually see a bunch more different spawn points, and these will be in different types of biomes. So if you want something a bit more challenging, because apparently some of the other biomes don't have as many pals or as much resources, you can check out some of these. The flying fishing coast has a bit more of a tropical vibe, and it's a lot flatter with lots of obviously beach. Each one of these biomes may have one or two particular unique different types of pals to it, but you will still find a plethora of the same pals all over the world. When you spawn at one of these locations, you will also usually find not too far away a fast travel point. So it's still worth doing, even if you don't really want to settle here, go and check out some of the other biomes. There's a winter biome, there's this tropical biome, there's lots to explore. And again, I'll be doing that in a separate video to give you a heads up about all the unique pals that you can find. Just be warned, some of the pals though may be a bit tougher to actually tame until you've got a bit more experience. And that's the crucial bit, you only see these different spawn points when you die, until you go ahead and find these naturally, and then find the fast travel points. So maybe you're just going to stick in spawning windswept hills, it is the best point apparently, but I would say explore deeply when you're around these parts. Go and see if you can find the golden chest, purple or red. The gold ones will generally give you lots of resources and they'll also give you the chance to get in a copper key which you need to open up the red ones eventually and the purple ones will give you again similar resources but you also get better spheres to go and take on some of the more difficult pals later. Chess, eggs and something called effigies all spawn in exactly the same spot but you have got randomised chance of what loot will be inside that chest and then obviously what kind of egg you might find. So there will always be an egg here but it might not be exactly this one here, it might be a different type of element. A lot of these eggs will be just regular pals that you might find in and around the area or sometimes from other biomes, so they can be good for that reason. You can also find uncommon or more rare eggs and these give you special pals that you might only find in caves or dungeons. But you won't be able to get them until you get the egg incubator, which unlocks at level 7 but you need to have defeated a boss and gained a special point. There's a whole complete technology tree unlocked only by defeating bosses and requiring points from them, so bear that in mind also. But I still think it's worth stocking up on these for sure. And if you watch my video I pretty much do it in a big loop showing you how to get all of the hidden spots and all the loot. You can often find certain power souls again which you'll use to level up which I'll explain a bit later scattered around on the floor as well as spheres that you can use on the basic ones and yes these effigies they're green statues and again they'll always be in the same location. You need to collect these and then you'll spend them later to increase your chances of getting much higher level or tougher powers. That in mind as well, don't go ahead and start base building as soon as you load in either. You might obviously want to follow a tutorial and start unlocking new tools. I would actually head down the hill, you won't be attacked by any pals, it's really relatively safe. There's only a few different biomes where you'll get attacked immediately by certain creatures, otherwise it's pretty safe unless you hit them. Take your time, scout out exactly where you want to build your base and make sure you've got plenty of space. Maybe flat land is what you're looking for as you are going to need a big amount of space to put all the different crafting benches and get your pals to work for you. 
You'll be asked to place a power box down. This is where you can choose what powers you want or to help with what jobs. And then this also acts as a respawn point and fast travel point. So don't be afraid of building off the beaten path if you really like a location because you now have this fast travel point to go back to. As I said, you pick up some of these spheres lying around. You need to capture 30 of these creatures to get some of the later levels to upgrade to your power box, which will also unlock you having a second power box as a base. So you might as well start now. Chickens I would probably avoid a little bit as they're more good for farming and you probably won't have access to that for a little while. Instead, focus on cats. These guys are really all good rounders for gathering resources and basically making sure they're carrying and doing things for you. You'll have very limited space. You can only probably carry one power until we start completing the tutorial sections and upgrading your power box, but you can still capture these as you've got space for hundreds of them and they'll just be in your power storage until you're ready to place them into your slots or carry them with you. One of the tutorial missions is also to go ahead and get 10 lambs. So it's definitely worth making sure you get a bunch of these. Again, these guys are really good for crafting and general just carrying stuff around. I've been a busy boy. Yes, I'm advertising yet another video. I will be taking a look at all the pals, of course, and giving you a heads up on which ones are good and which ones to avoid. Despite your POW army growing, you're still going to have to get down and dirty and mine lots of resources. Stone and wood is exactly what you're going to need a lot of, so make sure they're the things you focus on. I wouldn't worry too much about getting any ore, you won't be able to unlock a smelter until much later levels, so there's no point in wasting your tools or time on it just yet. But you will need a ton of wood and stone to go and craft all the different workbenches and ways that you can get these POWs to start helping out more. As you gain experience, you'll gain levels and then you can unlock new blueprints. There's a whole selection and you've got your points to spend on whatever you want. Obviously, some of these are worth it more than others and it's all about your playstyle. If you're decorative minded, you want to have a nice pretty base, there's all sorts of cosmetic items you can unlock. For me, I'm more functional, so always go for the stuff that's going to help you get more resources or progress further and get better tools. For the first three or five levels, you're basically unlocking almost everything, apart from maybe the repair kit, which is only useful for repairing your base if it's raided, but that doesn't happen until much, much later. And for that same reason, you don't need the bell, which makes all your pals go on defense mode, nor maybe the trap, which you can use to try and get some pals, but I didn't really have too many problems on vanilla settings getting pals, but just by getting the health very, very low and then hitting them with a sphere. You may want the cloth armor set because at night time it does get very cold and that can start having an impact on you but again it all depends on your settings and you may not even need that. The shield isn't a shield you actually hold it's just another health bar that will deplete as you're attacked by other pals but it's definitely worth getting and crafting. But yes early game think about the things that pals need to succeed and help get you more gear and items that will help you get more resources. As you level up, you'd also unlock abilities to increase your own stats, increasing either your HP, your stamina, or things like work speed and weight. Again, this starting area is very, very safe, so I'll focus on weight and work speed just to get things going a little bit quicker and not having to make so many stops back and forth because you're encumbered. Stamina could be good as well, especially if you are going to go and explore all around the windswept hills first. But in the first 10 levels, I really wouldn't focus on things like HP, attack damage or indeed stamina make sure you put your points into weight and work speed so the spheres that i'll be mentioning you can craft lots of them and obviously you might find some just laying around so always pick them up because they do cost a few resources and you can get different levels of these you really do want to master the art of getting creatures down to almost their last bit of health before firing one off obviously if you hit them too hard you will end up killing them Another reason to be careful in the game settings that you don't make your character OP as you'll have to literally use only your fists and hope that you don't hit them too much otherwise you'll simply will waste them before being able to tame them. The bottom right side you can see what sphere you've actually got equipped and pressing down on a d-pad you'll change the spheres once you get the different ones that allow you to get higher or tougher powers. When you go to tame one, if it's got orange, then there is a more of a chance that it's going to break. Maybe try hitting the creature again or throw another sphere. But when you throw a sphere, even if you miss, you do lose it. So you definitely want to make sure you get good at aiming, but also press LT. This should auto aim and make life a lot easier. And this is something I didn't realize until much, much later. I've got my settings up just to show you guys very quick boosted stats and it makes getting pals a lot easier, but you still have to be the right level. It's not an OP cheat. 
You'll find it as part of the game customization settings. It simply means that when pals are near your level, they will actually go a bit quicker, but it doesn't mean you can go miles above you and get a super OP pal on day one. If you run out of spheres, don't be scared for killing pals. You are going to need, sadly, even though they're cute, lots of their resources they drop. A lot of them drop very unique items that you'll need to craft and make better gear later. So once you've got two or three of pals that you want, then yes, sadly, you might want to waste away the rest so you can get them resources. Eventually, you will be able to set up farms where they'll drop their resources without having to murder their little faces. But until then, yep, get your big club out and start smashing their little cute faces in. In your pal box, you can choose to put your pals in the left-hand side boxes. This will mean you've got a choice of which ones you want to use and basically have as a follower. And then underneath, you've got the slots where you can equip your pals to roam around your farm doing tasks. You can have up to five pals that you can choose to take out at any one time. And you've got obviously as many spaces as you can get upgraded to help do jobs around your base. Otherwise, they'll sit in their library. And like I said, there's space for hundreds of them. You'll be able to see all different types of details, and this is why it's important that you pay attention to what you really need. If you've just unlocked furnaces, then you want to make sure you get a fire power, as these guys can ignite and keep the furnaces going. Later, spoilers, you might get something like a cooler box, and you might need an ice power to help refrigerate it. So for sure, you need 30 pounds to progress, but still maybe think about trying to get a nice variety of them. The pals that end up being in your party that you can have as your companions, they will all gain a bunch of XP whenever you do anything or they're equipped. The other guys do get XP, but it's a lot, lot slower. So you want to maybe think about leveling them up. Sometimes if you don't use pals, if you have them in the library too long, they can get sick and they'll take a while to basically heal up or get better before they'll start doing jobs or working or helping you out. So again, it's a good idea to rotate them or just accept that some of them you won't necessarily need and you're just going to focus on making some of your pals super strong. You'll be able to find special fruits to give your pals new abilities. Otherwise, as they level up, they'll gain these new abilities themselves anyway. And they've also got passive abilities that can help you gather resources quicker, mean you don't need to eat as much. And some have more offensive abilities. Every power will pretty much fight for you or offer some sort of combat offensive. So make sure you use the LB button to go ahead and deploy one whenever you're in trouble and then press the LB button to summon it. Place the same button again to go ahead and put it back in your inventory and then you can use the left pad and the D pad to go ahead and choose what power you want fighting by your side. Obviously your pals can die so you can stop that by giving them healing items or food but you have to do that within the inventory when you've got time and hopefully not getting attacked. The pals can also interrupt sometimes when you're trying to tame new ones. So there is a setting that you can use but I do believe left clicking or right clicking and sticking it will give you some choice commands that you can use to stop pals from attacking. Nothing worse than trying to get a pound that you really want and your little friend has just gone and spoiled it. Now the game does explain quite a bit, it's got a really good in-depth little survival guide in the pause menus. Now, this is pretty obvious, but something shiny and much different from some of the usual actual pals is probably worth trying to get hold of. These are actually super rare and they give you much more benefits and abilities. But of course I didn't have a sphere ready to go ahead and tame one. So always have one handy just in case you want to take or get a special rare one that only appear now and then. That was the only time I've seen one in about 20 hours. It was obviously much larger than some of the other cats. And yes, I know that's not their name. These guys are even larger, but these are boss type pals. But you can actually tame them. You just need to be at the right level or have the right kind of spheres. They'll have a little red devil sign pretty much on their health bar, warning you that you're about to get wrecked if you attack it. As long as you don't hit it, you should be good to roam around and something to return to once you're higher level, as you can tame some of these guys later. So them effigies that I spoke about gathering earlier and to the fact that you can get souls of pals, they all go into the statue of power. So you need to craft and place one and this is how you can upgrade and give your pals new abilities and basically make them stronger. And this is where you'll spend your effigy points once you've got enough. You need tons of the effigy as each level is going to mean that you need more to get the next upgrade. Also worth pointing out that of course there are male and female species of pals because you'll get them to mate and produce more pal creatures. You can even cross mate some of the actual species to get unique ones. The sign to think about if you've got a limited amount of spheres and you want to make sure you're bringing some home from far away, try and get a male and female pair. 
The heat boxes for craft and benches tend to be quite large in terms of the area around it, so do make sure you've placed your base or your walls thoroughly before actually start placing some of your foundations. You don't necessarily need a base right now, but as I said, you will occasionally get attacked by some dark enemies. To be honest, they're not that challenging. My pals took care of them, no problem when I had about five or six of them just around my base. Apparently in the future they do plan to add some sort of PvP element with other players, so that is something to think about, but I'm pretty sure we'd be given lots of notice that was going to happen, and it would be on fresh servers and game modes, rather than just players joining your world. There are some settings as well if you've got your friends joining you, remember you can have up to 4 players playing on the world together, or if you rent in a server that's up to 32, I guess you might have to check the settings so that you've not enabled base damage and PvP on right now. But yeah, I would say focus on base building for something nice and that you want to look at and is functional for you rather than worrying about too much about base defence. If you make a mistake placing something down, don't panic, you can just go ahead and use the dismantle mode. You'll find it as soon as you start placing anything, there's a button that you can press and then you can go ahead and destroy any base piece and you'll get all the resources back. Well that was the case with wooden at least anyway. I did find having chests and craft and benches basically too close together also had problems accessing them, so another reason you should give lots of space around each individual crafting bench. No snug and cosy little bases here, go big. Just be warned though, also where you place your power box, that is the heart of your base and gives a big wide circle where your powers will pretty much only roam. You can go ahead and put another one down, but you've only got one base until you get to level 10, from the actual base box upgrades and then you can have two bases so if you go ahead and destroy your power box it will maybe destroy a lot of the structures and items you've placed or built within that circle here's what happened when i tested it out as you can see quite a lot went i'm not convinced i got all my resources back from this either so think very carefully about where you place your power box and make sure you don't dismantle it unless you absolutely need to your pals will be perfectly safe, any that you've got roaming around will just literally go into your box and once you place it they'll all be back there again. A few quick ones now, if it does start getting cold at night time make sure you've got a torch and that should stop you from getting too frosty. Certain pals only appear at night time or in dark caves, so if you've got the game settings changed where you've got continuous at daytime which you can do, you may miss out on certain times until much later. A good time to get a lot of pals is when they're actually sleeping, so the ones that aren't moving around, that's a perfect chance to get how many of you need without having them attack you. Some only really appear for a very short time though, like these penguins, which were pretty OP and took me out on my first night. I'm honestly still not too sure what number is which in terms of recognising what pals you can probably get or not depending on your level, as they all had different numbers, 5, 6, 7, and I'm guessing that's just a variation of what level they are. But there was nothing obvious that said when you get your upgrades via the effigies that yeah, you can now go ahead and tame these certain creatures. So I'll be looking into that more so that you don't make any mistakes like I did and get owned. Don't pass up the opportunity to talk to NPCs. If they're like little encampments like this, they sometimes have extra loot. Eventually a wandering trader will come by your town or you can find them in settlements to sell and buy items. Top tip right now, save any cooked meat that you actually get and try and live off maybe berries as that cooked meat can be sold for quite a good profit to this guy. He particularly likes chicken breasts, so yeah, make sure you've got a bunch of that cooked up before going and finding one of these. Also 29 lamb kebabs went for about 1500 gold coins and he sells basically schematics for different armours and blueprints for items that you can basically get a bit earlier if you buy them and be able to craft as long as you've got them on you at a crafting bench. The rest of the stuff he sells is pretty much bog standard that you should be getting from drops or hopefully be able to craft in the future so I wouldn't waste your money. If you followed my guide on locations and where to find all the gold chests you should have built up about 7 or 800 gold coins as well. As you progress further the NPCs will change and obviously the traders, the ones that you come across might have different items to sell you. One thing I hadn't come across in my hours so far was wheat seeds so make sure you pick up some of them from this guy as you unlock ability to get wheat farms and they're a different item that you need to unlock in the crafting and upgrades menu. There are dungeons where you can find a plethora of resources and hard to find tames, especially some of the nighttime ones. There's one at the beach directly under where you spawn if you follow the path all the way down, 
And if you respawned on the southwest kind of fishing coast, you'll eventually find this little village settlement and another cave. It will tell you what level you will expect to face dangers inside, and generally you won't be too overwhelmed. I'm not going to spoil it too much, but obviously this is where you'll find certain pals and lots of resources. So if you're looking for more ore, things like sulfur, and big amounts of palladium so you can make spheres, this is the place to come. Just make sure you bring some good weapons, because there are some dangers in here. You should also find a mini kind of boss, i.e. some pals that are much higher level than you, that again you still have a chance to go ahead and tame. Don't get any funny ideas about robbing any of the NPCs, it looks like you can do quite a bit of damage, although they'll fight back, but you'll also now be wanted and a whole bunch of military dudes are going to turn up and basically kill you. These guys were incredibly tough, I admit the I was still relatively low level, but yeah, clearly they were going to win, and once they did, they went away and the NPC, I guess, forgot about things. But you wouldn't want any of your pals accidentally getting in trouble and maybe losing their lives because you'd gone and tried beating an NPC up. But not all men in uniform are necessarily good, look out for the bad ones. Getting your pals to do stuff for you sometimes can be really good and other times it can be glitched. It is early access after all, so if you do find that the pals aren't necessarily going to stations to either do and make craft stuff or go ahead and mine stuff at some of the wooden or the stone quarries that you can build, just come out your game and go back in and I found that was the best way to fix it. Items can respawn including dropped loot and resources that your pals have been gathering, so do make sure you run around your base seeing if there's any wood that some of them might have been chopping or any stone that they haven't actually got and delivered to some of your boxes. If you put some resources in boxes, some of the pals that transport stuff should be going back and forth, but they're pretty slow and they don't always gather as much of the pieces that you're harvesting, so you don't really want to be losing or missing out on resources. So get used to having periods where you might have all gatherers out or people that are going to just get resources and then swap them around for certain ones that you need more. If you need more stone, then cats are good. If you need more wood, then elk here are better. I found a lot of the time these quarries that I built, some of the creatures just weren't necessarily mining for them as much. You can pick your pals up and literally throw them at one of these benches and sometimes it will make them start to work, but it all just depends what else you've got going on. Eventually you're going to have to start keeping your pals happy, obviously making beds is pretty crucial and having a feeding box to feed them, but then you'll also be able to do things like put a sauna down for them to chill, and you can manually feed them as well by going into your inventory box, clicking on a food item and then choosing what pals in your party you want to feed. If they're continually saying they're unhappy or they're starting to get sick, it may be that they just need a break, so swap some out for some that are in your storage. The crafters will generally speed up anything that you leave, and if you leave it to them, they will go ahead and make it. Otherwise, whenever you're cooking a bulk amount of items, it will do it slowly on its own, but some things handcrafted, you have to actually go and make yourself. I found it was better to put lots of beds outside, as although I didn't see too many of them having trouble getting through doorways, I didn't want to risk them getting stuck. And so far, pretty much, I just dumped all my berries into the box. You don't really need cooked foods. As far as I could tell, they don't really eat them. As long as you've got resources in a box within your circle, then your ability to craft will pull directly from them, so you don't never have to have everything in your inventory whenever you want to make something. Eventually, you will be building massive, big, huge factories to house so many of your pals, so you can keep crafting and making lots of resources. By the time you get to like level 10, maybe 12, that's when I'd start thinking about getting more ore, so that you're ready to go ahead and get the furnaces and make sure you've got some pals that can really fire light them. There's so much to go through, I'm definitely going to be making a lot more guides, but I think nearly 20 minutes is just about good enough to get you started. Look out for them individual ones I keep mentioning, and I'll be back with even more power of content over the coming weeks. This game has pleasantly surprised me, I've never been a Pokemon fan, and their previous game Craftopia never really grabbed me in the right way, but this has been interesting. It's got a huge amount of depth, tons of craftables to unlock, and I'll be going over all sorts of things like that as well, and of course, like I said, showing you all the different powers. So make sure you've got notification bell dinged as well, and I'll see you rat bags for more Power content very soon.